There are things that have kept all of us locked up in dead tombs in our life, metaphorically speaking. There have been things where we thought, you know what, there is no hope. This thing is over. It's like a stone has come and it has sealed the death of our hope, the death of dreams, the death of vision, the death of aspirations. And you're like, it is immovable. It is absolutely immovable. And we all face seemingly insurmountable obstacles in our life where we think, you know what, how I, I've got a vision to get there, but between me and there, there's 100 stones. There is no way that I'm going to get there. It is absolutely impossible. So grateful that you are here. I am so glad that you tuned in today. I know that God has got a word for you. I'm so excited. I can barely wait to get into the teaching today. I'm speaking from the subject that I can't, but he can. I don't know if there's anyone besides me that has ever gotten to anything in life where you're like, I just can't do this. And I live in that realm most of the time. But here is the good <laughs> yes. news that even if you can't, he can. And we don't need a God that can do just what we could do. We need a God that can do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond anything that we could ever ask, hope or think. So whatever impossible circumstance you are confronting right now, I want you to know that you're in a good place because you are poised for a miracle. God is the God of the impossible. Impossible is where God starts. Miracles are what God does. I believe that over the next few weeks, we are going to see miracles. People are going to be healed. I believe that the Holy Spirit, even right now, is touching you right there. And if you need healing on your body, why don't you just put your hand on that part of your body that needs healing? And I'm going to believe in the name of Jesus for the power of God to touch you and bring healing and restoration and wholeness to that part of your body in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that relationships are going to be restored. I believe that children that are far away from God are going to come back into the purposes of God because God is in the miracle working business. Remember, I want you to write it down. You're going to hear this a lot, that impossible is where God starts. Miracles are what God does. I want you to go with me today to the book of Mark, Mark chapter 16. The Bible says, when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb and they were saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe. And they were alarmed, as you would be. And they were alarmed. And he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And then, and they went out and fled from the tomb for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. Whoa, what a story. Now in Christian circles, we normally read this account of these three women going to the tomb around the time of Easter. The good news is for a Christian, Easter is like every day because we live post-resurrection, which means Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. And that is good news that we have gone from death to life. And so I love to read this account as often as I possibly can. But here we are. It's a Sunday morning. Three chicks are making their way to the tomb. Now, the last time they saw Jesus, was when he was hanging on the cross crucified. What, what a gruesome sight that must have been after all of those illegal trials, after he had been beaten beyond recognition, his skin shed from him. And, and, and you know, they say that crucifixion is the most barbaric form of execution ever known to humanity. And so he was unrecognizable as he was on that cross and beaten and scoured and, and ripped and torn. And the last time they saw him was after he had said, it is finished and it was all done. And they watched Joseph of Arimathea wrap him up in a linen cloth and place him in a tomb. And imagine when that stone was laid in front of that tomb, um, it was signified the end, the, the death of a dream, the death of Jesus, the sealing of Jesus in the tomb. And this was the 
end of so many hopes and so many dreams for all of his followers who had believed at this point that this was the Messiah and their spirits had been crushed. The very one that had given them purpose and dignity and value and, and, and vision and he was dead. He was dead. So he died late on Friday afternoon. There was no time to prepare the body for burial. It was the Sabbath and so now first moment that the women could go to prepare the body for burial. They were going to the tomb. They wanted to honour Jesus. So they got there right there at first, uh, at first light. Imagine how discouraged they were. Imagine how disheartened they were. There's not a lot going on. I doubt that they were talking a lot. I mean, they would have just been waiting for the Sabbath to pass so that they could, they could just anoint his body and pay it some respect. I mean, it was the end of a dream. Their spirits had been totally crushed. And for them, this stone, this stone was the end of it all. You know, um, graveyards are not a place of, of great joy. Just a few months ago, I had to fly back to Australia. My mother had died on my 50th birthday and um, how many lost dreams were there? How many spouses were there? How many people? And often that's what happens at graveyards. That's what happens at tombs. They are, they are a place of death, not life. And I love Mark's narrative because out of all of the, the biblical narratives that, that explain this, this is the only one that really records the conversation um, of the women on the way to the tomb. Now, I doubt that they were talking a lot. Um, you know, as we were going to the graveyard from the church after my mother's funeral, there was, it, it, there's just silence. I mean, what do you say? You know, there's just that silence. I imagine it would have been the same for them. But they did get to one place where um, it dawned on them, and I really love this because they, it's just like they suddenly realised, like, who will move the stone? From the end, I mean, we're just like a chick to go like, okay, so we've got all of our spices and perfumes because we're going to anoint his body. It's like we can't even believe that we never got a chance to do that. He's been thrown in this tomb and in front of the tomb is this huge stone that, that they estimate uh, probably 20 people couldn't move it. It would have been at least, it was hundreds of pounds. And so at least 20 men wouldn't be able to. So uh, suddenly I'm imagining as they've got all their stuff, they've gotten out of the place right there really early. They're like suddenly not, so, and then it's like, who, who's going to move the stone? Who, who's going to move it? I'm just like wondering what it would be like at that moment. Uh, because it's a, a powerful question because they came to this realization that between them and Jesus, there was this immovable object. They realise that this huge stone that would weigh several hundred pounds, that there is no way that either of these women could move this stone, that they thought, who is going to do? I wonder if you have ever been at a place where you've got an immovable stone between where you are and where you want to be. There are things that have kept all of us locked up in dead tombs in our life, metaphorically speaking. There have been things where we thought, you know what, there is no hope. This thing is over. It's like a stone has come and it has sealed the death of our hope, the death of dreams, the death of vision, the death of aspirations. And you're like, it is immovable. It is absolutely immovable and we all face seemingly insurmountable obstacles in our life where we think you know what how I, I've got a vision to get there but between me and there there's 100 stones there is no way that I'm going to get there it is absolutely impossible and you know our stones don't cover the entrance of a tomb in Jerusalem but boy our paths are blocked by fear our paths are blocked by doubt our paths are blocked by insecurity or shame or guilt or condemnation or unforgiveness or bitterness or offence or anger. It is amazing the stones that are there that go, I just cannot move forward because this thing is blocking my path. We've all had bills that we just cannot pay and you might be facing this today. And you've tuned in and you're looking at something and they're knocking on your door and you're like, I don't have them. There are bills I cannot pay. There are dreams that there is no way this dream can be realized. There are relationships that you feel can never be restored. They just seem like they are way beyond hope. There are marriages that just seem like this is going to the divorce. There's no hope. 
This thing cannot work. There are children that are just out of control and we think we have lost these kids. There are habits that it just seems we cannot break this. There are grades that we just seem we cannot make. There are people that there is no way that we can please. There are emotions that just seem to be spinning out of control. There is no way I can control them. Fears, we can't stop. Pills, we can't stop popping. You know, a past we cannot shake. A future we cannot face. These are stones that keep us in our tomb and and keep us from our destiny and keep us from our purpose. There is not one purpose, not one person on earth that doesn't feel like you've got some stone in some area of your life that is stopping the plan and purpose of God from happening in your life. And we feel, I cannot move this. I cannot move. We're just like the women in this narrative. We're just like this. We're thinking, Who's going to roll that stone away? You've tuned into the right program today because Jesus Christ is the one that can roll that stone away. And they're thinking to each other, this is insurmountable. This is not possible. I'm wondering, I want to go through a list because I have a feeling there are some of you are going to resonate. You're asking who will roll away the stone of sorrow from the dark tomb of my loss? Who will roll away the stone of bitterness from the dark tomb of the hurts that I carry? Who will roll away the stone of cynicism from the dark tomb of our jaded vision of the world right now? Who will roll away the stone of disappointment from the dark tomb of an unrealized dream? Who will roll away the stone of betrayal from the dark tomb of a shattered past? Who will roll away the stone of grief from the dark tomb of a broken heart? Someone's wondering that right now. You're going, when will this grief ever lift? Who will roll away the stone of shame from the dark tomb of rejection? You have been rejected and you feel like your life is over and you can see no way forward. You are trapped in a dark tomb. Who will roll away the stone of guilt from the dark tomb of a secret sin? Who will roll away the stone of anger from the dark tomb of an injustice that was done to us? Who will roll away the stone of pain from the dark tomb of loneliness? You're sitting there and you're watching this program and you are feeling, you feel like you're going to die in your loneliness. Who will roll away the stone of fear from the dark room of terror? You are tormented night after night after night. You don't even want to go to sleep and you stay up flicking through all of the channels because you don't know how you're going to go to sleep because your mind is tormented. With terror, who will roll away the stone of apathy from the dark tomb of indifference? You see, there are dark, dead places in our lives and we wonder, can there be life where there was once dead? Is there anyone that can bring me out of this dark tomb? We feel like we're trapped. We feel like the dark is so dark. We will never see the light of day. But I'm here today to tell you that there is a God that still rolls stones away, that still can set you free from those dark tombs of your life so you can find freedom and you can find deliverance.